Today we're here at the Sicile Christmas Market. This is like opening weekend. It's not officially open, but... Softcore open. <laughs> it's kind of a soft open, yeah. So uh, they have a lot of little booths set up over there and there's gonna be drinks and food and things like that. So we're here to check that out and show you what it's like to go to a Christmas market in Italy. We got here as they finished setting up. We scouted out the area to see what they have open as it was about dinner time. Since this was the preview opening, they didn't seem to have any of the market fully open yet, just the food stalls so far. Grazie mille. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow, it's like summer. Yeah. Are you having tall people problems? Yes, I'm bumping into Christmas presents and it's not even December yet. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good sign or not. How's your wine? Let's see. So you went uh, very brave. You let the guy pick your wine. Whoa, this is exactly the kind of wine that I like. I mean, it's Tuscan, of course. It's very, like, <laughs> but it's very like, um, it's kind of fruity, but also smoky at the same time. I don't, not really, I don't have the, the, the sort of vocabulary to describe different wine types, but it's definitely pretty good. I mean, I'm, and uh, we have a great appetizer to go with. We got meats and cheeses in the cone. And what is this? S other snacks? I see walnuts. Walnuts, fruit, cheese. We just need to get next some uh, hot wine, some in brulee. It's going to be a great December. I know. It's still November. <laughs> it's great. As long as we keep going to these kinds of things, I think we're going to be having a lot of fun this year. Italy will never run out of wine lists. <laughs> I think we don't have enough lifetime to try all the wine that Italy has. And it actually gets a little bit more difficult in this area because not only are we close to the Austrian border and Italy has a lot of great wines here, but there's also so many different beers to try too. And they love advertising all of these Austrian beers and the local beers. So uh, yeah, like Mariana said, it's not possible to be able to try all of the wines, nor is it possible to try all of the beers alone in this region. Mm -hmm. Your favorite? Ooh, they have gorgonzola, Vern. It's following you. <laughs> Hello. Vernon always struggles with hitting things with his head yeah. everywhere we go. <laughs> I guess I'm a little bit taller than the people here, so uh, I have this problem. Cheers to the official first Christmas market of the season and here's to many more in the next month. Ooh. Mm. Whoa, these are good. So when you come to Italy, never order a wine. Don't tell them you want a sweet wine. Because they they will they will give you the look. If you know, you know. They think from their perspective, this is grape juice, right? So, I mean, all of this is, is, is sweet as it is. I mean, it's fermented grapes, so you don't ask for sweet wine uh, unless you're looking for a dessert wine. Uh, so what kind of wine do you ask for? So usually I, I want something a little bit more bold, a little bit smokier. I like those kinds of really, really deep, rich wines. So he went with something with lard and cheese with honey? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. So generally speaking, when you go to these kinds of places and you eat at them often, you want to get something unique, something you haven't had before. And so whenever we look at something and we're like, what the hell is that? That's usually the thing to get. We do that with the wine, we do that with the food. I feel like that's a way more adventurous way to try things. And I think that this is lard. I'm not entirely sure what this is. This is either cheese or butter. And <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about butter. I'm gonna find out so you don't have to. That is very flaky. It's Parmigiano. Oh. It's Parmesan. You want to try the lard? That's for you. I don't know if it's a Ukrainian thing or Slav thing or Eastern European thing, but I love lard. To me, the texture doesn't bother me. I love the flavor, especially with some seasoning, especially if it's good quality lard. Oh, if you know, you know. You, you gotta go to Eastern Europe. That is good quality lard. And I could smell it even before I bit it. Mm. It looks nearly melted. It's like, you can't tell whether it's solid or liquid or not. It's, looks... it's in between. It's a new scientific form, but it's delicious. How's your wine? Amazing. So it's actually 
a shame. I think so many people only come to Italy during uh, the summer because I think one of my favorite times in Italy is definitely fall and this time of the year. Yeah. Any part of Italy because here the climate is so nice. But even right now, you can, you get to see these 400, 500, 1,000 year old squares transform into these beautiful lights and these cozy atmospheres. They have these roasted nuts here that I showed earlier. And just you smell them in the air. You smell that with the wine, with the meat that they're cooking. And it's just the most cozy vibe. It's like the stuff you see in those Hallmark movies, but we are literally living it. And it's just, it's a shame that so many people have to come here in the summer. Because like, yeah, the beaches are nice, the Florence, Rome, Milan are nice. But I think this, this is what real Italy is like. And I think it's just, it's a shame that more people don't really get to experience that. Okay, so this is Frico. This is like the street version of Frico. Um, and Frico is not just a dirty nickname. <laughs> it also happens to be a really common dish here in the Friuli area of Italy. Um, this is like the northeastern part of the country. It's kind of like a German-Italian inspired dish that has cheese and potatoes kind of meshed together. It cheesy, honest, cheesy potatoes. It honestly sounds like something that you would think exists already in America and probably does just with a different name. Uh, what it looks like. Ooh, that cold cheese pull. And I think as far as I've seen from our traveling to Italy, so we've been to 10 regions out of the 20 of Italy, I've only been able to find it in the Friuli region where it comes from, mm -hmm. and also sometimes in Veneto, but sometimes. That's the neighboring region. So this is very, very salty. It can be sometimes really crispy. It's very hearty kind of food. It, it, this will put you to sleep right away. You're not gonna get this and like a few other things, you're just gonna get this and that's it. Unlike a lot of other foods in Italy where you have these little tiny plates, a little bit of gnocchi, a little bit of this, this is the kind of thing that will put you to sleep right away. <laughs> this and a glass of wine, that's it for the night. After this, we're done. One of my favorite go-to dishes in Italy are gnocchi, which is essentially potatoes and flour and sometimes egg. And you get this amazing, cozy feeling, feeling, a taste in your mouth. And it's just, they're always really nice and savory and very, very filling. Like you cannot eat too many of these without getting full. The butter, the seasoning they add to these, they're just very savory. I really love these. And let's let's try how these are. So street food, street food gnocchi. And they also come in different sizes. You can also make them with sweet potatoes, which are really good and very hard to find. But that's what they look like. Mm. They're so soft. Honestly, they just melt in your mouth if they're made properly. But these are also usually the cheapest dish to get. So if in a budget traveling Italy, get gnocchi. Especially different regions of Italy will have different gnocchi, different oils, different little spices they'll add to them. But these are a must. We have a thing with our neighbor. She's 81 and he's 83. They always think we're too skinny. So they always try to feed us, especially Vernon. She thinks he's super skinny. And so whenever we like we eat and we people watch and if whenever we see skinny guys, skinny Italian guys in particular, what did you say? I said but they probably now, don't have a grandmother or their grandma's probably dead or something. Because, because if those guys, if the grandmothers here see you skinny, they just want to feed you right away. So if you see somebody that's skinny, they probably don't have a grandmother or somebody's not feeding them. That's just how it is here. Facts. I have my hot Italian wine. I have the beautiful Sicily Square behind me. And for the past 20 minutes, we've just been walking around, enjoying the architecture and enjoying the beginnings of the Christmas decorations. And I hope you guys stick around and really enjoy th these bits of Italy that most people don't get to see, because this is def definitely off the beaten path of the typical Italy that most travelers go to. So definitely stick around, subscribe, and enjoy more Italy with us. Ciao.